Well, since the 2014-2015 fire seasons here in Washington, it's been clear change in our state forests is needed. Now some of that change is happening because of new leadership at the top of the Department of Natural Resources. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you with us tonight. I'm Whitney Ward. Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz has been on the job now just over a year, and she recently made a visit to Eastern Washington to talk with me about our most destructive fire seasons just a few years ago, as well as past mistakes and plans for the future. I wanted to ask the commissioner how she intends to make the wildland firefighting effort across the state better than it was. We know in 2014 we saw hundreds of people lose their homes and their land. Then in 2015 we saw three firefighters lose their lives. And the commissioner knows we can and should be doing better. I was up in that field and I was, you know, come on, come on to those engines. And they just sat there. It was a persistent claim in the summer of 2014. The DNR said they had the fire under control, so they pulled out and left it. They came in and they were there a half an hour and left. He sat there all day and did nothing. Nothing? Nothing. It was a collective claim from hundreds of homeowners across Okanagan County. And it sparked a landslide of criticism about DNR's handling of the Carlton complex. Four small brush fires that spread for days, eventually merging into a monster. I don't know, uh, it's just gone. We'll never ever be able to replace no. what we had. In the immediate aftermath, I questioned then DNR commissioner, Peter Goldmark. Homeowners are saying DNR crews didn't act, they were there, had a, you know, a tanker truck, but didn't act, watched their house burn. So the couple of things here. Uh, it's hard for me to know the veracity of those charges. I wasn't there, we haven't completed our investigation. Has it been utilized more this year than last year? And over the years, I've kept asking, trying to track down what happened and why. We haven't found any credible claim that we could back up through other means. So do you think these hundreds of people are making that up? I'm not sure it's hundreds of people. Today, Okanagan County still quietly bears the scars of vicious back-to-back -back fire seasons. Know, kind of where that hill, where skyline is. And all that past criticism remains just under the surface. What happened in 2014 was, was unbelievable negligence and incompetence. Kim Maltis lives just outside of Twisp, and the day the Carlton complex raged, he lost his home his dogs, his timber, and almost his life. Just got down on my hands and knees and I crawled over and found the Jeep and I got in and I got up and all those people were sitting in that field. I try not to think about looking over and seeing all those people just sitting there. You know, I try to get that out of my mind because you know, when you're fighting for your life, they're watching it like it's a movie. And in many ways, his wounds have never fully healed. They too sit just under the surface. You know, as much as they tried to make us out as liars, uh, they were the liars. You know, we were telling the truth. This is what happened. It's a problem that's been many years in the making. So I took those concerns straight to the top. DNR's new commissioner of public lands, Hillary Franz. What do you say to the people who have criticized DNR for kind of lax responses to these fires and having these small fires that then became massive fires? Yeah. So part of my role when I came in, you know, I've been in for one year, was to actually go out and listen. The whole goal of that was to listen and understand what was working in the past and what was not working. Do you think that there's a greater understanding now because of maybe those two catastrophic wildfire years of the high need over here? Yeah, so I would say I think the Western Washington is definitely getting very aware of the, what's happening on the eastern side and the, and the condition of the forest. The reality is this has become every summer for the eastern Washington. Over the last several years, starting with 2014, I did have the opportunity to talk with your predecessor, Peter Goldmark, um, to talk about mistakes made, especially in those 2014-2015 seasons. What do you think about those mistakes and how to move forward? 
So I think a big part of the mistakes is making sure that we are leveraging our air assets early so they keep the fire smaller because once they get large, they're too large for us to handle. Much of the area that burned in the Carlton complex and the Okanagan complex desperately needed fuel reduction, everything from grazing and logging to prescribed burning. So when wildfire passed through, there was nothing left. But these pictures show what can be saved when forests are actually treated. What can people expect under your leadership that will be different than what they've seen in the past? Well, I can only speak to myself and who I am. So first of all, I'm a believer that listening is the most important thing a leader can do. If we try to go it alone, we will fail. If we work together, we will be more, far more effective at, at succeeding, especially at something as daunting as wildfires. So knowing that I was going to come talk to you this morning, I talked to um, one of the families that I have talked to many, many times over the years. And so he wanted me to ask you specifically, is there going to be any kind of loosening on some of the restrictions when it comes to prescribed burning, logging for other companies, as another way of managing these forests so that it's not all just on DNR's responsibility. I thoroughly support prescribed burning. We need to get more prescribed burning on the landscape. We need to move from that pilot context to actually truly moving it aggressively forward, and that is a big part of our 20-year forest health plan. <laughs> Earlier this year, Commissioner Franz launched that 20-year plan with an aggressive goal of reducing wildfire fuel loads on more than a million acres. But our hope is forest by forest, acre by acre, neighborhood by neighborhood, we're going to get these forests healthier so that we can reduce the catastrophic wildfires that we've seen. And it's an effort that is already starting. Dozens of acres being thinned here by an Airway Heights prison crew in partnership with DNR. It was chosen because it butts up to this small road leading to the Riverview Estates housing development near Nine Mile Falls, a road that is the only way in or out. Now if a fire burns under that tree, it'll just burn past it. Robert Fimble is the Natural Resource Project Manager with Washington State Parks. He tells me the vast majority of Riverside State Park needs some kind of fuel reduction right now, and every year, he says, the problem only gets worse. We try to treat several hundred acres a year. We're making progress, mm -hmm. but, but at a very slow rate. Is it, is it enough to make a difference? <laughs> I think if I owned a house up here in the uh, Riverview Estates, I'd, I'd say it was well worth it. The actual reality of the 2014-2015 fires, which were Washington State's most significant fires, we lost over a million acres of our forest and agricultural land, cost the state over $500 million. That's lost revenue that could have gone to actually funding our schools and taking care of our communities. When you bring up the 2014-2015 fire seasons, you know, we were all out there watching our state burn up and watching people lose their homes and their livelihoods who are still to this day, they've never been the same and they won't be for, de you know, for decades, maybe even forever. Did it hit home more now that you're in a position of leadership that this is something that has to be dealt with and that you are in a position to do something about yeah. it. Yeah, I would say that it was clear by the 2014-2015 fires. We knew it wasn't necessarily going to get better. It wasn't a fluke incident. It was based on the management of our forests. But it's an effort that cannot be done alone. DNR is doing some great work in the county and we want to leverage that work and make it more effective. Spokane County Fire District 9 also just finished an in-depth analysis of the forest land within its boundaries, hoping to identify wildfire hotspots before they happen. So we have our work cut out for us. And so how do you pick and choose what is most important? Right, you can't treat everywhere, right. so you need to be strategic. If we can improve the forest health, we can limit the the damage from those large catastrophic fires. District 9 Fire Chief Jack Cates is the one who called on Dr. Herod for his expertise. Has he opened your eyes to things that you didn't know? Uh, yes. Trouble spots? Yeah, a few. Yeah. You know, there were a few spots that we, you know, didn't realize that they had the potential that they had. How much of the, of the area that you're responsible for is at risk? Probably 20 to 25 percent of the district is at moderate to high risk for, for catastrophic fires. It's a lot. That's a lot. What about this change in leadership at DNR? Are you optimistic with this change in leadership? Yeah, I think Hillary's doing a good job of addressing some of these issues and um, you know the DNR has been a good partner for fire districts for a long time and I think they're with her leadership that's even becoming stronger and I'm glad that she's putting an emphasis on um, 
hazardous fuels reduction. The more we can work together, the more we can focus those efforts to do the most good. Because Cates tells me it's no longer enough for agencies to simply worry about their own jurisdictions, and the same goes for private landowners. We want folks to, to, to follow the defensible space guidelines, but we need to change how fire arrives at their property. And that's what this program is about. Because they all agree it is about change for firefighters, state leaders, and victims. You got to put them out. And that's just the way. And you got to manage this forest. Are you optimistic with some new leadership? I hope so. I, you know, I, I want to say, yeah. I certainly am a big believer in learning, um, not repeating um, past mistakes. But there's got to be some some progress on the ground. And my job is to do everything possible to make sure that never happens again here. Hmm. Interesting stuff. It's interesting and you know it's uh, such an emotional topic for a lot of people especially who live in central Washington who have lived through many years of these fires. Saw, yeah. They don't um, they don't want to place blame where it isn't necessarily needing to be placed but mm -hmm. they do want change. I yeah. think that she has some big plans. It'll take years. It's a 20 year plan but um, she's certainly tackling it. Well it's nice that they're taking a proactive approach to it now. Mm -hmm. right? I mean wildfires just seem to be getting worse and worse every year not just here but the entire kind of west right. coast Western part of the U.S., right. so it's, it's nice they're doing something It about is, it. and that the fact that they say the you know wildfire season is getting mm -hmm. longer, that's not just rhetoric. Right. They agree, the experts agree, things are changing, and so, like you said, proactivity, mm -hmm. that's definitely the approach to take. Well, keep us posted on it, Whitney. Will Thank do. you very much. All right.